The Wild West is a time of untamed lands and unruly men, where justice is often in the hands of one and a gun, is supreme power. But in the midst of chaos and danger, a woman stood up and captured the heart of the most notorious gunman of the time. Her name is Maddie Blaylock. Her story is a story of love, tragedy, and triumph. In this video, we'll go back in time to the American West and explore the life of the extraordinary woman who tamed the Wild West's most famous gunfighter, Wyatt Earp. Remember to hit the like button because it helps us a lot. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell to not miss the upcoming interesting videos. Celia Ann Maddie Blaylock was born on January 1st, 1850 in Johnson County, Iowa, near Fairfax. She was the third child and second daughter of Henry Blaylock and Elizabeth Vance, living on a small farm that Henry purchased in 1846. Despite her parents' strict adherence to the principle of caning and children should be seen, not heard, little Celia, nicknamed Silly, still attends the master school. From a young age, she loved to listen to parables in the Bible and was taught how to live by the Ten Commandments. The marriage of her sister, Martha Jane, at the age of 17, to Charles Probst on July 1, 1870, was a turning point in Celia's life. She doesn't want to live on a farm for the rest of her life. Celia's determination to break free from the constraints of her upbringing eventually led her to a life of adventure in the Wild West. Celia's life as a child must have been difficult with her parents' strict rules and their insistence on compliance. But despite these challenges, Celia is an intelligent and curious child, eager to learn, wanting to explore the world around her. In 1868, Celia and her sister Sarah decided to run away from their mundane farm life. With modest sewing skills, Celia hoped to find work in the surrounding area, but opportunities for young women were scarce and their early independent lives were difficult. The two travel west together to towns along the Kansas-Iowa-Missouri border, where Celia will embark on her notorious journey in the Wild West. Unfortunately, Sarah's journey was short-lived and she returned home within a year, depressed and ashamed of her experiences. Her return to her homeland was unwelcome and she was greeted by her parents with disgust and humiliation. At some point after leaving the house, Celia adopts the name Maddie, having the ability to avoid recognition and maintain her identity. However, court filings later re revealed that she referred to herself as Celie, her childhood nickname. During her lifetime, no court records have been discovered using the name Maddie. The earliest known evidence of her existence is a photograph taken in Fort Scott in 1871, but what happened between her escape and this photograph is unknown. In 1872, court records show that she began working as a prostitute in Fort Scott, eventually making her way to Dodge City, where she became embroiled in the life of Wyatt Earp, the Wild West's most famous gunman. The turbulent love story of Maddie Blaylock and Wyatt Earp began in Dodge City in 1876, when Wyatt recently ended his relationship with Sally Heckle, who called himself Sally Earp. At this point, Wyatt was appointed assistant sheriff in Dodge City. While Wyatt served as sheriff, Maddie continued to work as a prostitute. In 1879, Wyatt resigned from Dodge City and went to Las Vegas with Maddie, Jim's brother, and Jim's wife, Bessie. There, they reunited with Holiday and Big Nose Kate. Together, they reached Pinal City, Arizona Territory, and stayed for two months. In December of that year, the Ert brothers and their wives arrived in Tombstone, Arizona. The 1880 U.S. Tombstone Inquiry listed Maddie Blaylock as Wyatt's wife, despite the fact they had no legal marriage record. 
Wyatt and Maddie's relationship was full of ups and downs, but their love lasted for about six years. It's worth noting that Maddie's life as a prostitute is not uncommon for women in the Wild West. In fact, many women have turned to prostitution as a way of survival in a time when opportunities for women were much more limited than for men. Maddie Blaylock is no stranger to suffering, and her excruciating headaches have always been a burden. While living in Tombstone, Arizona, she turned to laudanum, a popular pain reliever of the time, and unfortunately, this led to addiction. It is unclear when Earp and Blaylock's relationship ended, and Tombstone Diary, George W. Parsons, never mentioned seeing Earp with his next common-law wife, Josephine Sadie Marcus. Similarly, John Clume's memoirs make no mention of the pair being together. However, the accuracy of some accounts, such as Waters' book, have been questioned due to bias against Wyatt Earp and includes unverified details not mentioned in the original manuscript of the book. Allie Earp, common-law wife of Virgil and brother of Wyatt Earp. Historical records may not tell the whole story of Maddie's life, but her struggle with addiction serves as a reminder of the difficult realities faced by women in the American West. The gunfight at the OK Corral was a turning point for Wyatt Earp and his family. After the assassination of Morgan Earp on March 18, 1882, Wyatt, his brother Warren, and a group of deputies began a hunt for outlaws known as the Cochise County Cowboys, whom they believed to be responsible. Responsible for the attack on Virgil Earp and the murder of Morgan. They tracked down and captured some of the group. In early April, Wyatt left Arizona for New Mexico, and Maddie Blaylock left Tombstone with other members of the Earp family for Colton, California. She hoped to receive a telegram from Earp telling her where to meet him, but it never came. Instead, Earp left for San Francisco where Virgil was receiving treatment for his arm. It was there that Wyatt began a relationship with Josephine Sadie Marcus, with whom he had previously contacted when Johnny Behan was still the sheriff of Tombstone between 1880 and 1881. Maddie Blaylock sadly left Colton and returned to Penal City, but the silver rush died down and much of the town's population moved elsewhere. Blaylock ran out of ways, intending to return to prostitution in Penal City, but most of her potential clients had disappeared, and she found it dis extremely difficult to make a living. Her addiction to laudanum, popular painkiller at the time, also worsened leaving her with more severe headaches than before. It's not entirely clear when Earp and Blaylock ended their relationship, but many historians have speculated that Earp had pre-existing feelings for Josephine Sadie Marcus when they first met in Tombstone. Their relationship developed, which in turn resulted in Earp's disinterest and loss of affection for Maddie Blaylock. Maddie Blaylock's life ended tragically on July 3, 1888, when she drank a large concoction of alcohol and laudanum. Her death was attributed to opium suicide, a common term for drug overdoses of the era. Maddie struggled with addiction for some time, and it is possible she accidentally overdosed and died of respiratory failure. The coroner's report on her death was brief. Maddie is buried in the Pint Cemetery in Penal City, now a ghost town west of the former mining town of Superior, Arizona. It's heartbreaking to think that Maddie's life had ended so tragically. Her story serves as a reminder of the dangers of addiction and the importance of seeking help when struggling with substance abuse. Maddie Blaylock was a woman ahead of her time, living a life of turmoil and tragedy Despite her difficulties, she was able to capture the heart of one of the Wild West's most legendary shooters, Wyatt Earp. While her role in Wyatt's life may be short-lived, her impact on it is undeniable. 
Maddie's story is a reminder of the complex and often overlooked role of women in shaping the history of the Wild West. Her spirit lives on in countless stories and legends that continue to fascinate us to this day. May her memory inspire us to continue to seek and celebrate the untold stories of the women who helped tame the Wild West. Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.